Okay. This is version two of the making espresso fast. In the previous one, I weighed every dose and did it into the niche. In this version, we're going to do pre-weighed doses. Now, this is more like what a morning rush cafe would do. This is what I recommend cafes do, actually, is these single dose grinders are just far more uh, reliable and reliable at making good espresso in a cafe setting. So the problem with all those grinders with hoppers is that they give you a dose varying uh, 0 0.1, 0 0.2 lower to 1.2 higher, like the mythos will go 0.2 under to 1.4 higher in mine, and that makes your espressos go all over the place. So I'm not really a fan of, of the mythos and frankly most uh, hopper-based grinders. So when I do coffee in a production setting, this is what I do is I pre-weigh all my doses and I use a single dosing grinder like the Niche, the P100, the EG1, the Key. All those are great grinders uh, and I'm willing to sacrifice a little bit of speed in order to make better coffee. So. In this video, I'm gonna make, I believe, 27 doses of espresso. I've got three porter filters set up, and I've also done something different here. This is what I've done in my production settings, is I've put the scale actually inside the drip tray. And I took the drip tray cover off, and it's right in there, and um, basically, as weight happens on here, it'll register there. The uh, the decent scale is quite waterproof and there are a few cafes doing this exact setup for months and months reliably. You can also see there's a cable here and that is USB power. So this whole thing is all wired. Okay, so enough talking, let's go make some espresso. So let's go to the top camera and let me show you what I'm doing. So here we are, grinder on, porter filter, funnel, dose, go. And I'm just going to get the next ones ready. What I'm going to do here is I want to get my espresso started because I've got a customer waiting right there. They're wondering what I'm doing, and what I'm doing is looking for my temper. Okay. Tamp and off goes the first espresso. Now I'm going to dry this, put it in, put my funnel on, put my weight on, and grind. Get ready for the next one. And really, ideally, I'm hoping for this porter filter to be ready by the time the shot stops over here. because the slowdown here is the fact that espressos take, that was a 25 second espresso. Okay, so as soon as the espresso stops, I do that and knock that in. But I do have another porta filter, so I'm gonna start grinding. And while that's grinding, I'm cleaning this out, getting it ready. Remember, as soon as I hear that espresso stop, I want to be there with the next porta filter. I'm trying to basically never take more than 10 seconds. There we are. And in this situation, I have enough porta filters that I can actually take the time to dry, which is what I'm doing here. And off I go. And the next one starts. You might notice that I've got this kind of Chanel colored porta filter here. This is another one of the prototypes that we're checking out. And we might end up selling. I think I would be better off with two grinders, that's what I've done in the past. I need to really crank. Okay, and what I also can do is lift and pour there, just to prepare the next one. 
And that shot was 24 seconds. I'm trying to go for something that is in the 26 to 28 seconds, so it's a little bit faster than I'd like. So I am going to find that ever so slightly. So. being fast in the cafe is you basically never just stand around. So as soon as something is just, uh, as soon as a machine is doing something, you want to be doing some prep to feed the machine. So essentially it looks like right now my grind is stopping at about the same time the espresso is stopping. shot, that's reality. So I think that happened because my jar is getting too heavy. Because that is one thing I am doing differently than a real situation, is I'm not making these espressos into cups. So let's change our routine a little bit. And let's make these into espressos. So there we go. And I'll start that there. Okay, so now I'm actually making real drinks into real espresso cups. So just to reiterate what happened there is this large cup here got so heavy that it started to lean on the rim and give me a false weight reading. And that's more like it. That's a 24 second shot that just completed, which is in that time area that I'm happy with. I'm going to find it even slightly there. Okay. And get me a cup. And start. Espresso, though, so looking at the top camera there, uh, is a really beautiful looking espresso. Good quantity, nice thickness, speed's about what we want. You can see if you're watching the espressos on the other camera there, they're coming out quite nicely. There's, we've done quite a lot of espressos with almost no spatter. That spatter happens if you've got channeling, that means a shot that wasn't um, really just perfect. So there's another one of our espressos. Go. Now, one thing about using a scale, though, is you do have to put the cup before you start. If you put the cup after you start, you can cause the espresso to stop as it reads the weight of the cup as being part of the drink. All right. I'm going to open a few more of these cups. I need a bit of space for myself. But it's nice to see the espressos. They're pretty looking. that we hear right there is the water tank refilling. That's version two of our uh, refill pump. It is twice as fast and half as loud. So you notice that refill cycle was quite fast. Um, and that's pretty much every time we make something, when we have to reorder it, we look to see what did we learn? What can we do to improve it? And that's what happened with the refill kit when we made the second version, is we were able to find a pump that was faster and quieter. More expensive, but that's how it goes. Uh, we did not pass the price on to you, it's just more expensive for us to make. Number of cups of beans is decreasing. 
not super happy about how I am uh, making the espresso machine sit, but this is still way faster than most coffee bars in terms of making espressos. Espresso there. Now the reason I'm tapping there is the bean, the cups I'm using for beans are also the cups I'm making the espresso in. They're not brown, so they're not especially dirty. It looks pretty good there, but um, just trying to get the grinds out. All right, I'm catching up a little bit. Oh, that WTT was actually pretty good. They've not all been good. Uh, it's actually a lot of fun for a while to work in the morning shift at a cafe because you have to do a kind of extreme amount of focus and you tune the world out and you crank and it's fun to kind of know, you get to know what you can do in a stressed situation. Paul has put lids on these, which is nice and sanitary, but is slowing me down. Um, and one thing I'd say here is it's tempting for me to use the third port of filter here and get the grinding started. It's making the espresso machine wait, but let's see if that helps us at all. Closer. These espressos are all looking nice though. Alright. And we have six, nine, ten, eleven to go. And I don't really mind the fact that I'm able to get the grinder going on the next one. I think that little workflow change I just did was a good one, which is to say, use all three porta filters. And here now, when that is doing that, I'm going to put the next one in in just a second. Okay, that porta filter is ready to go. There. Okay, if I can get the grind started before the shot's finished, and that's what I need to be prepared here for the next one right away. And nice. We've got all those three quarter filters in action right now. Pretty cool. Now, I only have one funnel, so I am preparing this puck to go. Just remember, the block here is actually the espresso machine. It takes 30 seconds for each espresso to get made. So I don't want the espresso machine to be really under weight. And have I mentioned how much I love this pitcher rinser? I don't know if you've noticed what a mess this is. But each time I have a dirty puck, I just knock it out and rinse. And it's pretty fast. And I'm back to zero every time. And my rag is not filthy. Okay. There we are. Also note, people do think on Instagram videos that the decent is a loud machine. We've got room mics in here. These are not directional mics. So you hear the grinder, you can hear the machine, you can hear me working. Um, the sound of that water is about the same sound as 
the espresso machine, which is to say the sound of water dripping is about 52 decibels. And the sound of the espresso machine is in that range as well. We've got another video where I show you that with a decibel meter. Seven seconds the machine had to wait there. That's not too bad until I was locked in. Also, one thing that's really saving me a lot of time is this temper. And the reason is it's got a leveling plate on it. And I've got to think. Uh, I just put the temper on, push, and go, and they're all the same at the time. So my goal with this temper was really to make camping super boring. Not something I have to focus on. Without a leveling plate, Camping is something that's quite difficult. You have to get your three fingers in the right place in order to level as you temp. Um, and you notice the espresso machine couldn't care less how many espressos we make one after another. That's um, not something we had to work at. It's just the design of it. Uh, being heat on demand with a refill kit, it just chugs away. Alright. I need to prep some beans. We have five more espressos to go. And we are going to have coffee ice cream on Friday, it looks like. Based on how much I've got here. So many espressos. Bear in mind, a typical cafe is doing one to two hundred espressos a day, and I'm trying to do 27 myself in a matter of tens or twenties of minutes. So this is the rush panic situation, and what um, I would normally suggest for a cafe that needs to do more speed than this is just give each of your espressos their own station. Instead of trying to coordinate between several people. The other option which does work really well is to let one person do espresso and the other person steam milk and make latte art. Uh, but you need two machines to do that so that we don't get in each other's way. Um, also, I don't know if you notice, my hands are crossing quite a bit. This is a left to right machine set up, and I don't like this. This um, wood top here is set up so you can flip the whole thing, and you can do the machine on the right hand side and the grinder on the left hand side, and that's how it's got it set up in the factory. This looks like a better setup for right-handed people, but actually it's worse because you see me crossing my hands constantly and getting in my way. So I wouldn't mind making a video for you guys where I've got my preferred setup and you can see how I don't get all tripped up. 
And also, it would be helpful if I had some customers here that were taking these espressos away because I am running out of room. All right. Go. All right, three more to go, and then it's shift change for me, and I can go have a break. That could be the rinse. do a turn so you can see that's what that looks like there. Um, when I do a tamp, it's good if I push down and then turn. That's called polishing the puck. And if you don't do that, you risk occasionally having coffee grounds stick. Um, so that with all tampers, not just the decent one, is a good move. So, second to last. was a 27 second shot. So I'm also, as I'm cranking my shots, I'm also trying to pay attention to the shot time um, because the shot time will give me a pretty good approximation of how on recipe I am. And I'm looking for 26 to 28 seconds is my ideal. This is running with a scale underneath it. So I don't have to worry about the dose rate. My special hour is always going to be 36 seconds. So that cortical filter is done. And now, since it's the end of my shift, I'm being nice to the person who's going to follow up after me and just cleaning up, turning off the grinder. And Shin chooses to refill now. Fairly reasonable puck prep. And not cheating, actually cleaning up the last bits. And when I'm done with my shift, I like to lock the portal filter in, but lightly, like so. There we go. That was, I believe, 27 espressos. There's a whole bunch here. I started off also with this huge cup. Uh, that was espresso for a while until it got too heavy for the scale and started touching things. That is my routine for making espresso fairly fast. I think you'd be pretty happy in a cafe if you got it, uh, me, hopefully, behind the bar. Um, and if you've got any comments, any suggestions, as I mentioned before, I will do this again with it flipped, machine on the right, grind on the left, because that's a setup I much prefer. But this still worked pretty well. Thanks for watching. It's all going into coffee ice cream um, on Friday. Uh, Ming says, unrelated to espresso, is the waste to plumb. The drip tray looks completely dry. All right. Um, yes, the drip tray is virtually dry. There's virtually no water being wasted. If you go to the top camera there, there's a little bit of water there. But um, I don't actually know if you can see that. Yeah, you probably can't see it. But um, 
the the water that is wasted after each shot is just what's on the top puck. Now, when you start the espresso machine, when you start the decent espresso machine, you hit start, it sends hot water at what it thinks is the goal temperature and then measures it right before the group head. And if it's not the right temperature, it sends it back to the water tank. Now, the reason I'm mentioning that is that when you're making shots back to back, you have considerable faster espressos and less water wastage. Because if it's my first espresso of the day, the hot water will reach the group, it will be under temperature because some tubes or, or valves on the way will have cooled it down. That water will be rejected and sent back to the water tank. And for one, two, three, four seconds on your first espresso, the decent will not start making coffee until the water hitting the group is exactly at the temperature it asked for. Now, when you make a back-to-back -back espresso, you're not letting anything cool, the valves, the tubes, everything is hot. So that's why it's like hit start and then it just goes because everything is hot and happy. So it's kind of the opposite of a boiler machine. The faster you need the espresso machine to work, the faster it will work because it's emphasizing accuracy of temperature and keeping everything hot and fast is a lot easier in that situation. Cool. Uh, one more question. We should one day do a, a milk steam test to see how dry the steam is. So the question is, uh, we should one, do, one day do a milk steam test to see how dry the steam is. Uh, we have inside the decent a sliding bar that tells you how wet you want the steam to be. And when you make it more wet, you get more churn of the milk. Uh, uh, yeah. So here we are here, and this is the slider here. And typically we're gonna be at 0.8 mils per second, and that gives you quite dry steam. 1.2 mils per second is going to be more churn. So um, imagine that it takes about 20 seconds, just to put some rough numbers in, 20 seconds at one mil per second to steam your latte, you'd be looking at 20 mils of added water. Now dry, the question is, there are two definitions of that. One is, does the steam have much non-vapor state water in it? That's what people usually mean when they mean dry, and that's kind of hard to measure. Uh, I mean, usually the way I measure that is I put my hand in front of the steam wand, and if uh, essentially there's no water forming on my hand, then it's extremely dry. But the other way to think of dry is what is the energy content per milliliter of water? And that's how much water you added to your drink. So dry steam can be thought of as extremely energetic steam that has nothing but very high energy uh, water particles. And the more you lower that flow rate, you can go down to, I believe, 0.4 mils per second. Yep, 0.4 mils per second. That's gonna be crazy dry steam. And uh, we can in fact do it here. Okay. And I'll just put my hand here. I know this is hard for the microphone. I'm gonna move close to this microphone here. Uh, I don't know if you can tell, but there's just, I have one drop, two drops there. It's really, really dry. And now I'm cranking the steam up to one mil per second and the sound changes a bit. It also becomes uh, darker in color. And now you can see how water is dripping. This sort of camera one. You can see water is dripping right here at a much higher pace. Okay. So you can choose how dry you want the steam to be. Uh, you just get less churn out of the machine. Okay, that is on two tap steam mode with the latest firmware, which lets you take the milk jug away. Uh, and then it just pulses gently. You hit stop again and the machine stops. So thanks for watching.